Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives. Uh, still working on our revisions, uh, still on our team generation calculations uh, as a request that we have. Uh, so we're going to be focusing on this question uh, 3.1, uh, which is the application of our steam tables, the use of our steam table and uh, any relevant formulas that are needed, but together with the use of uh, the steam table. So 3.1, uh, this is like, uh, uh, if you check actually 20 marks on the steam. So we have a lot of things that we are supposed to consider on this question. A lot of things that you're supposed to consider as each question is separately from each other. So uh, it helps us to understand the concept of steam uh, with this typical question. So let us check 3.1. Uh, the first part we're given that the feed water at a flow, at a flow rate of 1,2 kilograms per second. So this is the mass per second of the water that is entering, uh, that is the feed water in this case, entering a plant. is supplied at 27 degrees Celsius. The specific heat capacity of water is 4,187 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. And also we are asked to calculate the enthalpy of the fluid at uh, megajoule per hour. That is, they are simply saying in megajoule per hour in this case, all right? We are considering this in megajoule per hour. Okay, let us consider the information of this question, uh, the first part, which is 3.1. We just want to take the information here. If we are to calculate the enthalpy, this is the feed water that we are talking about. And we are given the mass per second, considering the mass per second. In actual sense, the enthalpy of water, which was supposed to be given as HW, but remember, we've got H wet that we consider as HW, or we can write H wet. So let us just write it as H, which is the specific heat capacity, because we are given the specific heat capacity in this case, times the temperature of water even at a certain pressure then we are going to consider hf in this case but here we are given the temperature that is being supplied so we're going to just apply the specific heat capacity times the temperature of uh, water that is in this case for the wet uh that is uh, for the wet, uh, feed water in this case but the question is what are we going to do with the mass that we are given here because we're given the mass per second. From this part that we are obtaining here, we are obtaining the end of without the use of the mass. But whatever that you're going to obtain in this part or from this part that you're going to have here, we are going to be obtaining our answer in a kilojoule per kg. So in the moment, we now multiply by the mass per second because we are given a certain mass in this case, which is the mass of water. The moment we multiply by this mass of water, remember this mass of water is measured is in kilogram per second. And we are required to have this answer in megajoule per hour. How is that going to be possible? All right, let us see. Let us see from our calculations, uh, the specific heat capacity we are given of water, which is uh, 4,187 uh, times the temperature of water, which is given at uh, 27 degrees Celsius times the mass of water, which is uh, at 1,2, but this is in kg per second. All right, so I want you also to understand the issue of units here before. Let me just uh, do it this way. The moment we multiply these two, we are obtaining our answer in a kilojoule per kg. Now we have multiplied by the mass in this case, which is uh, in a kilojoule per, in kg per second in this case, meaning to say we are multiplying by a kg per second, same as kilojoule per kg, multiplied to kg per second like this. So this and this will cancel. So we are going to remain with kilojoule per second. The moment we multiply by this mass in, kilo, in kg per second, our answer is going to be given in kilojoules per, per second. So we are supposed to be very, very careful about that. Our answer is going to be in kilojoule per, per second.
but we are supposed to have this in megajoules per hour. We are supposed to have it per hour in this case. So what are we going to do to have this in per hour? All right, so let us simplify this uh, and see what you're going to have first, okay? Let us simplify. Uh, the first part is going to give us um, 135. Uh, if you just multiply this to 135, uh comma six five eight eight something like that all right like i said we are going to have kilojoule per, per second kilojoule per second in this case because this and this part cancel out of the kg so this answer is going to be in kilojoule per, per second now we want to convert so we are going to start with conversion of kilojoules to megajoules from kilojoules to megajoules Remember, mega is times 10 to the exponent of 6 kilo times 10 to the exponent of 3. So in order for us to convert this kilo to the exponent of 6, we are supposed to multiply by the inverse. The moment we multiply by 10 to the exponent of 3, we get 6. So in order to convert it to, to, to have a 6, you multiply by the inverse, the inverse of to the exponent of 3, which is to the exponent of negative 3. So meaning to say we are going to have our H as one comma, sorry, 135 comma 6588 times 10 to the exponent of negative three. This is to convert this to, to megajoules. Or you can just divide then use your calculator to convert it once. Then the second, this one, per hour, we have to convert. Remember an hour, is equivalent to 3,600 seconds. What about a second? It's equivalent to how many hours? So it's one over 3,600. So we are going to divide by one over 3,600. This is to convert to hours so that we are going to have our answer in megajoule per hour. So that's our H is going to give us 488. So at this part, you're going to obtain 488, comma, three, one, seven, six, uh, eight, and so on, which is going to be three uh, comma three, seven, one, uh, six, eight, which is going to be seven, two. So we are going to have this in megajoule per hour. So the conversion of units now is the one they are testing you. They are testing you, can you be able to convert from a basic unit that you're supposed to have in actual sense, if we are to just multiply by the mass given in kgs, not in kg per second. We were just going to multiply by 1,2. If it was, and the answer will be in kilojoules, we won't have per second, but because we have this mass in kg per second, kilogram per second, so it means we are going to have kilojoules per second at the end, but it's needed in megajoules per hour. So we have to convert until we obtain uh, the exact uh, part of our question. All right, let's check 3.2 in this case. On 3.2, we are given a condition of a plant. All right, uh, let's take our information. A plant uh, operator is monitoring the enthalpy of wet steam. So take note, enthalpy of wet steam, leaving a boiler. So this is, take note, this is different. This question we are done is not part of this. This is a different type of, a, a different question on its own. So we are told that a plant operator is monitoring the enthalpy of wet steam, leaving a boiler at a 1.5 megapascal. The steam flows at 0 0.7 kilojoules per minute with a 3% uh, moisture in this case. So take note, it's given at the moisture of uh, 3%. So what are we going to consider in this case? All right, let us check our, 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 our question. What is the expected end up of steam after the time frame of three minutes? What is the expected end up? We are dealing with what? Wet steam. So that's why uh, it's very, very important for you to consider your formulas. Okay, if you consider the wet steam, you are given the formula. Uh, it's part of your formula sheet. So here, let us just take our information. Uh, in this case, that's a 3.2 can be important. We are supposed to calculate H weight in this case, but we know that H weight is given as HF plus X HFG, even in our formula sheet. This HF for water and for evaporation taken at a given 
pressure and x being uh, our dryness fraction in this case. So if we are to consider from our information, we have uh, the pressure of the boiler, which is at 1,5 mega Pascal. And this pressure is supposed to be in kilopascal in terms of uh, for our calculations purpose, we are supposed to have our pressure in kilopascal. So 1,5 mega Pascal. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that, let us check what I'm trying to say here. If you check from your steam table, the pressure is given in this case in kilopascal. That's why I'm saying you are supposed to have your pressure in kilopascal. So here you are going to change this 1,5 megapascal to kilopascal. That is multiplied by 10 to the exponent of 3, which is going to be 1,500 uh, kilopascal. Remember the opposite. We When we converted the kilo to mega, you multiply by 10 to the exponent of minus 3. If you convert the mega to kilo, you multiply by 10 to the exponent of positive three. So please be careful about that one. Then also we are given the mass of steam, which is 0 0.9 kilograms per minute. So this is the mass per minute, all right? So we are given the mass of 0 0.9 uh, kilograms per, per minute. And also we have our, uh, uh, three percent moisture content in this case. So this gives us this is three percent wet. So what will be the dryness fraction is going to be at uh, hundred percent minus three percent. So you subtract the part that is wet. So three percent is moisture, which is uh, going to be at ninety seven percent, which is uh, zero comma nine seven. So that's we have the dryness fraction of uh, zero point nine seven. All right, so that was our information. So our X is going to be 0 0.97. And also we have the time frame. We are asked to calculate or oh, what is the expected end up of steam after three minutes. The time that we are given here is three minutes after the time of what? Three minutes. So it's very, very important to consider one, how is the mass given? It's given in kilograms per minute. And the time is given in minutes. So meaning to say our calculations, they are best to be maintained because this time is per minute. It's in a minute and the mass is kilogra uh, kilograms per minute. If you were to consider in this case to calculate the enthalpy of uh, the, the, dry, uh, the wet steam in this case, which is uh, H-wet, this was supposed to be the formula, but because we are given the mass in this case, we are going to obtain now, or we are going to multiply this whole part that we see by, by the mass, because we are given the mass. And this mass here is measured in kilograms uh, per minute. Why list the whole end up that you're going to have here was supposed to be in a kilojoules per watt, per kg, all right. So we are still back to that concept again to say we are given a kilojoule per, per kg multiplied to the kg per minute, which is over a minute. So the kg and the kg cancels, our answer is going to be measured or is going to be taken in a kilojoule per minute. So the moment we multiply by the mass, the units here that we are going to have are going to be kilojoules per minute. All right, let's work it stage by stage. It means that H wet is going to be uh, HF, all right? We need uh, at 1,500, what is uh, going to be HF at the pressure that you're given at 1,500. So that's why I said convert this to kilopascals because your pressure is given in uh, kilopascals. So we need under pressure. This is our pressure here. So we need at 1,500. So under the steam, 1,500 here, uh, this is the pressure at 1,500 here. So we are going to consider the values that are corresponding at 1,500. All right, so at 1,500, we need the value of HF and also HFG. So we need HF and also HFG, which is uh, HF, which is this value here of 845, and HFG, which is uh, 1,945. So these are the values that you're going to take into consideration at 1,500. So as we saw that our HF there 
was 845. So we are going to EF this uh, with the mass. We're going to EF uh, 0, comma. All right, sorry, uh, HF, we said 845 plus X, our dryness fraction of uh, 0, 0.97 times uh, HFG, which is, uh, uh, we got this one is 1,945. So you take the values as they are from our, from our steam table concept. So please do not uh, confuse these values and we are supposed to take our HF, remember it was this one and this was our HFG. So please be careful on your values, substitute your values. And like I said, the moment, we multiply by this mass here, which is 0, 0,9, but is taken as kilo kilogram per minute. Our answer is going to be in kilojoules per, per minute. So we are going to obtain, uh, in this case, uh, we are going to obtain uh, 24,000 actually. Uh, that is 2,458. Uh, that is uh, 58, 2,458, Four eight five. So that is what you're going to have in this case, which is in kilojoule per a minute. But is this what we are given? No, we are given for a specific time frame of three minutes. What is going to be edge weight for a specific time of three minutes? So the moment we multiply by the time, it's like this: we are having the kilojoule per minute. Then we multiply by the time which is measured in the minutes. The minute and the minute will cancel. Our answer is going to be directly in kilojoules. The moment you, you multiply by the time. So do not be confused about how sometimes these units will be presented in your memo there. The minute and the minute cancels. You remain with the kilojoule. So we are going to have now 2458,485. Uh, multiplied to three minutes. Like I said, the moment you multiply kilojoule per minute times the time in the minutes, our answer is going to be remain in what? In kilojoules. So we need to say we are going to have 7375,455, which is now in, in the kilojoules. So that was our H weight. So please be careful. For now you're supposed to calculate your, your enthalpies in this case, depending with the uh, information that you're given. You're working with mass per minute. You're working with the time per minute. So know your units, how are they going to cancel? We, If you are to use this at once, it's the same. You are given the first one, the enthalpy here was supposed to be kilojoule per, per kg. You multiply to the mass, which is measured in kg per minute. You multiply by the time, which is measured in minutes. So still we are going to have the same thing, the kg, this one cancels, we just remain with kilojoule. So know how, how to play around the units, how to play around with the units in order to obtain the exact term. So that is how we could have calculated our H weight for the time frame of what? Of uh, three minutes. All right, so that was 3.2. So 3.3, .3, so I'm not gonna erase this part because you never know, you might need some of the information here. Uh, as you can see here, they want us to consider 3.3, so let us not erase 3.3. .3. Determine the end up of dry steam in kilojoule per kg at a pressure of dry steam. If you are talking about the dry steam, you're talking about HG in this case. So uh, HFG is for the evaporation, so HG, at 1,200. This one is a direct question, all right? We just need the pressure here. What is Hg at that pressure? 1,200. So this is 1,200 uh, direct at 1,200 in this case. So if you are to consider, this is Hg for, for dry steam. So if you consider under this column here at uh, 1,200, our answer is going to be this one which is uh, 2,782, all right? So we are going to have our answer as 2,000, all right? So that was 2,000, in this case, 782, which is measured in a kilojoule per kg, this one was direct. Or you can use the concept to say Hg is equal to, Hg is equal to Hf plus Hfg. 
at the same pressure. So you take HF at the same pressure at 1,200. This is our HF. If you, if you add these values, HF and HFG, if you add these, you must get HF, uh, HG in this case, you must get this value of HG. So that is another way that you could have uh, used if you are, uh, you couldn't get it direct from your steam table, but as you can see, it was a direct value because it was already given from our steam table. All right, let's consider question 3.4. 3.4, we are given that um, we've got a feed water in this case at 2 kg, which is entering a plant. So we have a similar question from April uh, 2020 paper, which had uh, a similar consideration of a feed water that is entering a plant. So as uh, it is entering a plant, it is it enters at a certain pressure, certain temperature, and so forth. So we're given that this is a 2 kg, we're given the mass of uh, 2 kgs, in this case 3.4, the mass in this case of 2 kgs, entering uh, all right, at 31 degrees Celsius in this case. So this is T1, the temperature, 31 degrees Celsius, so the temperature of water, and exits as a superheated steam, that is the most important part. When it is exit, meaning to say the plant here is a superheater, a boiler, which is a superheat. So when it exits, it's now superheated steam, exiting at a pressure delivered at 2,5 megapascal. Like I said, our pressure in kilopascal, so multiply by 10 to the exponent of three, which is 2,500 uh, kilopascal at the exit and the temperature of 288 of the superheated. So this is the temperature of the superheated, which is uh, at 288 degrees Celsius. And the specific heat capacity of the superheated steam, meaning to say after it has been superheated, uh, we are going to have 2,1 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. That is for the superheated steam. Determine the heat required. All right. This question, be careful. Determine the heat required for what? What is this re heat required for? This is the heat required to change this water that we are given when it is entering the feed water to be a steam, which is a superheated steam. There is a heat that is, the, the heat that was taken that is required. What, how can we determine the heat? Meaning to say we are talking about enthalpy in this case. We've got H1 and here, We've got H2 according to say, this is our input, this is our output, but this H2 represents the end up of the superheated steam. It's after the steam has been, super, uh, has been superheated. So we talk about H superheated, which is our H2. So the heat that is required is to change this H1 into H2 or into H superheated. That is the heat required. So simply, Heat required is the change in enthalpy, which is going to be H2 minus H1, whereby H2, like I said, represents what? The enthalpy of the superheated steam, which is H sup in this case, minus H1, which is taken at the given uh, uh, information that we have in this case, we can use a uh, pressure, we are given the pressure, we can use temperature, that is H1, the end of that corresponds at a given what? At a given uh, uh, temperature of pressure. So let us take our information into consideration. If we are to consider H1, we are not given in this case, right? If we are not, if we are to consider H1, we are not given this value of H1. So where are we going to take the value of H1 or the value of HF? We are going to consider this at the input because at the input, we're given the temperature. At the output, we're given the pressure. So the input here is that one degrees. So meaning to say, we are going to need the temperature at uh, 31 in this case, all right? So we're going to need our temperature at uh, 31 degrees Celsius. All right, so let us just hope we're gonna have this 31. All right, let us check where are we gonna have our temperature, the temperature, not the pressure in this case. We're gonna need our temperature of uh, 31 degrees Celsius in this case. So if we check, 
Yeah, we have got 31 on this part. All right, so this is our temperature. And uh, we've got 31 here, 31, 0, 31,0, 31,0. So that is uh, the condition in this case. So H1 simply represents HF. So that is the end of water, which is uh, uh, direct here. Uh, that is 130, all right, at this at this temperature, HF there is uh, 130. So we are going to have this at 130. All right, so that's our H1, which is at 130 here. So H1, like I said, it uh, simply indicates HF, all right? So let us also write this, that H1 is equal to HF, which is 130 uh, kilojoule per kg, all right? So H1 we have, what about the one for the superheated uh, steam? This is the specific enthalpy in this case. We are now talking about the specific at, at, uh, at pressure of uh, 2,500. We are going to need H2, which is the uh, superheated. Remember, H sup is given as uh, uh, Hg when it is specific. For the specific, it's going to be Hg plus um, Cp into the superheated temperature minus the saturation temperature at the given pressure we are going to obtain the value of uh, Hg that is uh, uh, for the dry steam and also the temperature, which is Ts at the given pressure. And the pressure there at the output is at what? 2,500. So at 2,500, what are we going to have? All right, at the output pressure, uh, 2,500. All right, so at 2,500 here, let's check. That's here the pressure uh, being 2,500 in this case. Remember, what are we going to need at 2,000 is uh, Hg. So you're going to need this value of Hg. And uh, also we say the temperature, which is this one, the temperature. All right, so take note of our temperature is in degrees Celsius and Hg in a kilojoule per kg. All right, so this is what we are going to consider in this case. All right, so let us just substitute, there's a lot there. Okay, so this is our Hg, remember our value guys, uh, that was uh, at uh, 2,801. Uh, All right, plus uh, the specific heat capacity, which is 2,1. Uh, the specific heat capacity, that is 2,1 at the superheated and the temperature for the superheated, which is this one. 288 minus the temperature there we got uh, 223 comma comma 9 degrees Celsius so do not forget the values that we had here Hg and um the this value here for Hg and also for temperature at the given pressure these are the values that we are simply uh substituting in this case all right so after substituting your values, you can simplify. Uh, let's simplify and see. We have got uh, at top of the superheated steam, which is going to be 2,935,61 in uh, kilojoule per kg. So thus we can obtain the heat that is required. The heat that is required is simply the change in these enthalpies that is uh, when we had this as water that is at H1, and when it was transferred, uh, when it was heated to become steam. So that is the heat required. So H superheated, uh, the, for the superheated steam, our end of there, it's uh, 2,935, uh, 0,61 minus H1, which is for the water, which is 130 uh, kilojoules per the kg. All right, so simplify. We were going to obtain uh, the end of in this case as uh, 2,805. So that's 2,805,61 in kilojoule per kg. So take not measured per kg, but we are given for a mass of two kgs. Given a mass of two kgs, we are going to multiply by two kg. So like I said, if you are given a kilojoule per kg, kilojoule per kg, multiply by a mass in kg, this will cancel your answer. 
is going to be remaining in kilojoules, not kilojoule per kg, because already we have used the mass that corresponds to that enthalpy. So it is going to give us, uh, in this case, we are going to obtain 5611,22, which is measured in kilojoules now because of what? The kg that cancelled with kg. So we are supposed to be very, very careful. So that is how we could have uh, calculated or determined the heat that is uh, required. Okay, the change in heat from water to steam. Then 3.5, it's a continuation of uh, 3.2. If, if we are to take note here, it's a continuation from 3.2, 3.5. All right, let's see our question here. Let's see what we are given. Calculate the volume of wet steam. We are supposed to calculate the volume of wet steam in question 3.2 in cubic meters. Take note the units we are given in cubic meters after three minutes and the volume of dry steam. But the volume of dry steam in question 3.3. So you have got uh, two things that you need to consider here. 3.2, we are supposed to work with the volume of wet steam in cubic meters after three minutes. All right, let's go to 3.2. We need the enthalpy of what? Wet steam. 3.2, 3.2 here is where we had given this H, where we asked you to calculate the expected enthalpy of, uh, of wet steam. That is the part that we had from this part. All right, that is from our 3.2. So meaning to say, what are we to consider from 3.2? All right, let's take our calculations. We calculated here. 3.2, this was our information about the E3.2. All right, this is what we had here. We calculated H wet from our 3.2 at a pressure of 1,500. That is what we are supposed to consider in this case. And the question one needs us to calculate the volume because the question here, on 3.5 is to calculate the volume of wet steam from question 3.2. How do you calculate the volume of wet steam? Because some of this information might not be necessary, but I just wanted us to consider what is it that we are given at 3.2. All right, so this is now 3.5. So from 3.2, we are asked now to calculate the volume of wet steam. Remember the volume of wet steam is given by the dryness fraction times Vg, which is the volume uh, for the dry, uh, for the, we are talking about dry steam in this case. We have got the uh, dryness fraction times that one for the, uh, for the dryness fraction, which is uh, X times the volume when we are talking about the dry steam. But it's not only that, we are considering to, to calculate this at a time frame. we are given the time frame for three minutes. And also we are given to calculate this in cubic meters. Why are they saying so? All right. If we are to calculate the volume of wet steam, we are going to take, because it's a continuation from 3.2 and from 3.2, we have got our dryness fraction, which is 0 0.97. So meaning to say the actual volume in this case for the wet steam was supposed to be given as V wet is the dryness fraction of uh, 0 0.97 times the volume in this case of dry steam, which is at the pressure. Remember 3.2, we are working at the pressure of 1,500. What is the value of VG there at 1,500? So meaning to say this value was simply from our steam table at 1,500, all right, we are still on this one. 1,500, we need VG in this case, which is a, uh, uh, the one in the third column, this one, VG. And VG is measured in cubic meters per kilogram, cubic meters per, per kilogram. So take note of the units. So we are at 1,500 here, at 1,500. So this is our VG in uh, cubic meters per kilogram. All right, so I want us to take our answer and try to apply this now and see how we're supposed to have our a solution at the end. All right. So we saw that our VG is given as uh, 0, that was 0, 0,1317.
So if we are to multiply it or if we are to simplify this, we are going to have our volume in cubic meters per kilogram because of the VG. All right, which is going to be in this case, let's say we multiply it properly, we were going to obtain a uh, 0, 0,1 uh two seven seven something like that four nine and so on and so on we measured in cubic meters per kilogram but we are given for a time frame in this case for a time frame in minutes so what are we going to do now all right in order for us to use this time because the tech load, yeah, there's nothing that has to do with the time here. So please be careful. There's nothing that has got to do with the time here. So if we multiply by this time, there's, we are not going to have an effect. We are not going to have our answer in cubic meter. In order for this value to, to end up having a time, we must consider the mass that we're given with time because here we are given the mass of 0, 0,9 kilogram per minute that is the part now that consists of time at 3.2 the part that consists of time which is 0 0.9 kilograms per minute so the moment we multiply this answer here this whole value that we are seeing we multiply this by 0 0.9 which is the mass in kilogram per minute the kilogram and kilo like i said before cancel our answer now is going to be cubic meters per minute we are going to have our answer because these two, they will cancel. So it will be cubic meters per minute now. So this is what you're supposed to have. You're supposed to have your answer as 0, 0,1149741 and so on. This is now in cubic meters per, per minute. So in order to, we are now having a minute in our answer. So we can remove this per minute by multiplying by what? By the time in minutes per minute times the time in minutes, we are going to now end up with the volume in cubic meters. So multiply uh, these two, uh, we are going to obtain uh, 0, 0,344492 and so on, which is going to be 345, something like that, in cubic meters. Since we have canceled cubic meters per minute times the number of minutes cancels this part, we are dealing with the number of uh, minutes in this case. So this will cancel we are remaining with what? The cubic meter. So know how to play around the units, how to change the units to what you are given. So that was the first part of question 3.5. But also on the same 3.5 here, there's another question. There are two questions here if you take into consideration on 3.5. They asked us here to calculate uh, the volume Take note of the first question, the volume of wet steam from person 3.2 in cubic meters after three minutes. That was it. Then we move on to this one. And the volume of dry steam of dry steam in question 3.3. And it must be in cubic meters per kilogram. Let's consider what we had from 3.3. From 3.3, remember, that's where we're given that... Um, uh, the dry steam in this case, where we are asked to calculate the end up of dry steam at a pressure of 1,200, and we just took this value. It is the same thing with uh, the volume of dry steam at that point here. At 1,000, we are just going to take our volume in this case. So that is uh, from question 3.3. Our volume in this case for dry steam, which is given as a VG, like I always say, uh, VG for dry steam. So we're just going to take this at that pressure because we're just given the pressure there. So what is the pressure at 1,200? At 1,200, what is the volume VG? So if you consider, this is our VG for dry steam and our VG at 1,200 is this value. So we're just going to take as it is and this value is measured in a cubic meters per kilogram as needed in our illustration or in our question. So this is going to be uh, 0, 0,1632. Uh, okay, just take it at that pressure as it is, which is uh, cubic meters per the kg. So the next part was question was just direct. All right. 
uh, let's see 3.6. 3.6, now we are asked to calculate the specific volume, the specific volume of superheated steam in question 3.4. All right, so it's a continuation again. Remember 3.4, that's where we are asked to, to determine the heat required. This was 3.4, remember? We calculated 3.4 here. Now we are asked to calculate or to determine the specific volume in this case of the superheated steam in 3.4, given an index of what? Of 1,3. N is equal to 1,3. What is the specific volume? Remember, specific volume, uh, is given by the formula from uh, this one. We have it from our formula sheet. So this one is taken from question uh, 3.4. All right, the specific volume is given as uh, N minus one over N into H sub minus 1941 over the pressure that is operating at that point. So this is uh, the end of, of the superheated steam, N being our index. So everything, as we can see, is there. It's just a, a continuation from our 3.4. This is from question 3.4, just a continuation. So meaning to say our volume is going to be given as what? We are given N as uh, 1,3. If you take into consideration here uh, from the information that we are given, N, the index is 1,3. So we're gonna substitute this, uh, that to be 1,3. So we've got uh, 1,3 minus one over 1,3 into H sub for the, if I, I mean for the superheated steam, we are considering the superheated steam and for the superheated steam, we calculated H sub in this case, which is this value. So we have, that is why they are simply taking from this question because they know that we have calculated these values before. So we have our value and also the pressure, we have it at uh, 2,500. So it's just a substitution that was supposed to happen in this case. So I'm just gonna substitute in this. So let us take the, uh, that is uh, as they are, these values as they are. So we're just gonna substitute here. Uh, remember H sub here, uh, do not forget this one, but let me just reduce so that we can see everything here. All right, let's see it this way. I don't know if we'd be able to see it properly, but uh, that's our value in this case here, which is our H sub. Remember that is uh, 2935,61. All right, uh, so it's because it's too small now. So that is one minus, uh, 1941, okay, then we're gonna divide by the pressure in this case. All right, take note of the pressure from our information. Uh, the pressure we're given at 2,500. So we're going to use our pressure at uh, 2,500 uh, kilopascal. So that's it. We are going to obtain the volume in this case, which will be measured in uh, cubic meters per kilogram, uh, that was going to be 0 0.091810 uh, and so on. If we drawn off, it's gonna be 0 0.092. Uh, we change this to be a two in uh, cubic meters per, per kilogram. Given a certain mass now, you have to multiply by that mass. But in this case, we are just given to calculate this in cubic meters per kg. Take note, of your instruction uh, in this case, and also what you are given in that particular question. In three, four, our information was limited at a certain uh, part. If you are to consider here, they are saying in cubic meters per. Yes, we are taking it from a certain mass, because 3.4, there's a mass that you're given here, but the moment we use the mass, it won't be cubic meters per kilogram. In order, the, or the moment you just use this mass, it will be cubic meters per kg times that kg. So the answer is going to be in cubic meters. So in order for you to have cubic meters per kilogram, you are not supposed to use the mass of two kg. So the only information that we wanted from 3.4 was the pressure and also the enthalpy of the superheated steam. These, uh, this is the only information that we wanted from question 3.4 in order for it to help us answer or to have a solution to this question uh, 
3.6. So those are the typical questions on uh, steam generations. Let us uh, try by all means to revise as much questions as we can and also to join the membership family. By joining the membership family, you have got access to your own videos as a, as a group. This can help us to uh, enlarge our family as we are moving on as a family of Mason African motives. But let us just continue also to revise more question papers and uh, let us let me know about areas that we are supposed to revise on so that we can work on those areas, revise those areas together uh, before the exams uh, uh, that we are able to be having uh, very soon. So that's it, guys. Uh, let's see in our next class.